Hi, and welcome to another Hand Drink Solo Wine Info video, this time on Groot Constantia's 2003 Shiraz. Now, I definitely will go through the flavor notes that you can expect on this wine, but before that, I feel like I need to give you a little bit of context. Uh, and so if you are one of those people who is allergic to things like history and context, then feel free to skip ahead to chapter six by using the progress bar at the bottom of this video window. Groot Constantia is a little bit of a national treasure in that it is the oldest estate in the entire country, established in 1685. But of course, being a national treasure is a little like being David Grohl. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Because, I mean, sure, you have a super high rock star profile and you get to sit on a throne from time to time. But the legend surrounding you has been built and established for so long that after some time it becomes almost impossible to change anything about you and you have no choice but to continue to release album after album of droll dad rock. Should we start calling him David Droll? Until eventually you dissolve into the dust of a thousand plectrums. So Groot Constantia, in the same way, have for decades been the source of both international winemaking accolades and also a kind of sense of winemaking boredom. And of course the boredom wasn't because they were producing bad wines, nay nay. It was more just a sense that nothing ever changed. Now us wine journalists are always hankering after the new, after something different, after a story to tell. And I must confess that this kind of, I guess, addiction to the novel can cause us to confuse consistency with complacency. And to their credit, Constantia's defense against the fact that there is no evolution in this valley ever is that they have discovered a firm style that they stick to and that they have strong attachment to their traditions. So in that sense, Groot Constantia is not only the oldest estate in the country, which makes Constantia surrounding Groot Constantia the oldest ward in the country, but it also means that Constantia as a whole is definitely the most old world in its mindset, which I guess, if you're looking for points of difference, makes them in stark contrast to the rest of the rather fluid South African wine scene. Perhaps Groot Constantia's commitment to tradition is what makes them novel. And of course, for any of you who've been following wine news in South Africa, the sleepy little suburb of Constantia was rocked not once but twice in 2021. The first time was in about April when a bottle of 1821 Grand Constance was auctioned off for 420 odd thousand rand. And of course, everyone thought that that was a once off crazy fluke. That was, of course, until September of that same year when another bottle of Grand Constance 1821 auctioned for 967,000 rand, almost a million rand for a bottle of Constantia sweet wine. And if that wasn't enough, later in the year, Groot Constantia's 2019 Sauvignon Blanc scored the highest of all the Sauvignon Blancs in the entire IWSC competition, making them essentially, in the world, the very highest scoring Sauvignon Blanc that you can get. But even amidst all the records being shattered and awards being handed out, the narrative didn't really change. It said the same thing that we've known for hundreds of years, which is that Constantia makes good white wines and good sweet wines. But, like an orc army developing beneath the surface of the earth, change has been afoot in Constantia. Namely, that seemingly, without too many people noticing, the red wines coming out of the valley have been getting better and better. And Michael Friedgen has definitely remarked on it before, as has Christian Eads. But there is this growing sense that we've been overlooking red wines coming out of Constantia. Traditionally, the people who have been lauding Constantia reds over the last very short while have been looking at their Bordeaux style, these big, muscly, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot-driven blends. And yet, when I sat down and tasted my way through up to 20 of Constantia's red wines, the wines that impressed me every single time turned out to be their Shirazes. And this kind of freaked me out. So I set up a blind tasting. I got eight people to sit down at a table from a wide range of wine drinking experience. I had W set diploma students, wine professionals, all the way down to the people who only ever drink wine when their cranberry kombucha and vodka mixers have run out. And while my data set was small, only eight people at the table, the results were still very surprising without knowing which wines were where three of the eight people picked the three Constantia Shirazes 
as their three favorite wines. Seven out of the eight people round the table had a Constantia Shiraz in their top two wines of the six on the table. And finally, even those who weren't fans of Constantia Shiraz had to admit that there was a particularly distinctive flavor profile associated with it in that it was a much moodier, more savory affair. In conclusion, it seems that at least half the people loved Constantia Shiraz's more than anything else that was on show from Stellenbosch or the Swartland. Secondly, everyone could agree that the Constantia Shiraz's were particularly distinctive, which means that whether you like them or not, the fact that their sensory offering was so different to anything else on the table meant that they have something to offer that other regions cannot. But so what, Han? You might ask, what am I supposed to do now? Well, I'd say don't take my word for it. Go and hunt down a few Constantia Shirazes and try them for yourself and see whether I'm full of nonsense or not. Okay, but enough postulating. What can we expect in the glass? Well, as I mentioned, it certainly is a moody little beastie. There are loads of savory elements of leather and uh, game, smoke, copper ham, black olive, and then there are the fruit elements of plum and ripe blackberries. On the palate, the fruit is still very much intact, and the tannins have all but melted away, just leaving a gentle sort of mulberry-like acidity right on the back end, which is really quite silky. If the savory elements are a bit much for you, give it some time in the glass. A lot of those will blow off, and what emerges is hints of that black fruit with some dried flowers and a bit of lavender that really is quite beguiling. Now I said we would be examining how Shiraz's age and I think this is a fair reflection of a Shiraz that is in its last days. I wouldn't wait too long before drinking this guy but in that sense he's kind of like that dying distant uncle who becomes all zen and peaceful in his last days and shares these pearls of wisdom that you otherwise might never have got out of him if he was still bungee jumping and wakeboarding. And so spend a little bit of time with this guy, let him open up and then leave your thoughts on the website so that I can know what you think of this little beastie. If you have any questions about Shiraz or Hroit Constantia or the history of wine in the South African winelands, then feel free to drop them in the section below uh, and I will get back to you. If you're watching this on the Handring Solar YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with videos on rising winemaking stars, unusual cultivars and the exciting regions around the South African winelands.